We're gonna try and keep this video a little bit shorter than average. I've been making them way too long. Sorry about that. Uh, today we have a Bachman G scale um, Climax. Uh, it's a par two parallel pistons driving a crankshaft and then a drive shaft to the forward and reverse trucks. Uh, sort, sort of complicated, sort of not. Um, this model presents uh, some challenges and some opportunities. Most of the challenges are is that it's incredibly compact and uh, what we're about to see here, I'm going to just reach my giant arm across here and pull this top the coal load out. Uh, yeah, you can see it. there's no room to put anything here. Furthermore, there's, uh, you can see here the bosses in the bottom of this to hold a 40 millimeter fan, which I have, uh, which I have put away. So uh, we have a we have a plan. So first of all, this is a uh, uh, a completely stock track ready DCC system, uh, and I've never really played with one of these. So this has a default tsunami decoder sound card actually a sound card it's not a it's not a decoder and we're going to remove that like this yeah right oh it doesn't make any more room does it <laughs> actually it does um we're going to install this little doodah here with a lot less of these wires it'll take the place of the tsunami sound card and then laying on top of that will be our rail pro decoder which will just fit very nicely right in here um, but you ask what do I do about cooling and c cooling is sort of dramatic so so what was here was a 40 millimeter fan just stuck here in the middle with no input or output except there are these little slats here but no way to get the cool air in or out it just kind of stirs the air up in there and I didn't think that was particularly effective. So what we're going to do, oh, whoops, we already did it. Uh, we're going to create a small plenum and put a much smaller fan in and back it right up against one section of the grates. And so it's just going to suck in through this hole. Oops, can't quite see that in the middle. It's going to suck in through this hole right here, blow fresh air straight down onto the hot part of the deal. This won't be a little bit more level when we get done here. Um, and the batteries, uh, that's the opportunity, and the battery is going to go someplace else, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So that's the general outline here. It should actually go fairly quick because there's no real major operation to, to do. I don't have to take the locomotive apart to get to anything. Um, so off we go. And the Climax has a problem. And the problem is there's no place to put a battery. So this is going to be our solution. Let's see here. And we're not going to do the whole thing right here in front of your eyes, but here we go. Um, authentic log. We like that. And another authentic log. This authentic log has been hollowed out by a good friend. What we're going to do here, and this is just going to be kind of a brief pre-assembly test, we're going to take this battery, this giant 6.7 amp hour battery, it's going to run this thing all day long with removal cord, because it's a little snug. And what will go in this hollow is, uh, I don't see it laying out. Oh, there it is is this uh, we commonly refer to as a PTC device. This is a 9 amp resettable fuse, etc. Et It'll fit right down in there. Uh, the wiring is going to come out of the thin part of the log and this plug will boop, make it all happen like that. And then this simply sits up here on the log car with a little pigtail down to the locomotive. And so, <laughs> sorry, that looks so professional, right? And we'll probably replace the chain with something a little more durable. Um, although this, yeah, we can't quite get that to fit right. So uh, we'll, we'll come up with an alternative to that that's uh, similarly good looking. But there you go, one battery car ready to uh, almost be done. Like I said, we're just talking like a little hole under here. And uh, yeah, this thing's going to be badass. All right. Uh, 
damn it. There we go. You know, it always kind of falls apart in your hands. Okay. Hey, look, free parts. I don't know where that came from. Huh? Huh? Well, we're going to investigate that. We found this part in the coal box. We know that's not right. And sure enough, if we remove this and take a look underneath, hopefully this shows up in the video. Oh, man, are you kidding me? Framed incorrectly. Right there, in my finger, is a spot that that composter belongs. So we're just going to shove it right back in there. Hold it there for a second. And now I can see the leads on this side. Why it was never soldered on this side, I don't know. Don't come out of there. have to get a battery connection out of this somehow. So we're going to route it down underneath like this and then come up through a hole right here by my little finger. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, a series of two holes. And then I'll just need to uh, solder a couple of extensions. The battery connection is right there. So that makes that connection for this okay. We'll probably have to do a Y in this because we also need to feed power directly to the uh, Rail Pro decoder as well. Oops, upside down. Bad marketing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right. All right. So, having done this before, I know exactly where there are a couple of nice little clear spots where a wire could come through, and they are right there. Okay. Now, unfortunately, that bit's not big enough. So let's revisit this a little bit. Enjoy working with plastic is. You know, if I don't need a big, powerful power tool to achieve your goal. Notice so I just poked an eighth inch hole with my fingers. I had a pilot hole started, of course, but the point is, is once you get the knife blades turning, now we have a Let's go right through. Alrighty. So now we should be able to do something like that. <laughs> yep, I am that good. Alright. So, let's think about this. Power and ground to the locomotive. Okay, uh, a lot of little frustrating bits out of the way here. I'm going to just take this completely apart. Yeah, right in front of your eyes. Because I haven't really put anything together. This is the trial fit. And we're actually powered up right now. So that's that's okay. We can... Uh, it'll protest here. Let's make it... Oh, oh protesting. Okay, so... <laughs> we're going to adjust the volume. There we go. It's just like... That. it's hard to get out of there then we have to stack this there's a reason there's a, a, a rusty old truck sitting here you'll see in a second this this is an unstable load but I can prop it like that there we go okay beautiful and there's the controller all tucked in well relatively neat it's been it's been a okay here we go that's I'm gonna address that before I put deer finally and I don't know if you can see down inside there. Uh, this does a pretty good job of looking down inside there. 
So this is the large scale adapter board. And I sort of struggle with it. Some of the labels are worn off on this and I, I posted on a form and I finally figured out how, how this works. And of course, Bachman's not stupid. They worked it out to benefit me, which means I was able to just hook up their leads uh, to the controller and have it suddenly controlling the, uh, the front and rear light. Let's uh, see, uh, page, page, page two, front light, back light, back light. Can you see the back light coming on and off? Well, let's do this. Ooh, it's so dark. Ooh, there we go. Light coming on. Oh, and the front light. You can turn them both on at the same time, except you can't. <laughs> yeah, right. At any rate. Okay, back to, back to stage lighting, such as it is. Okay, so that completes the actual physical part of this. Um, the chuff is wired up as well, um, but the so we just don't have the software to support the hardware input. So when the software update comes, you know, the, the, we don't have to take it apart. We just have to send it some firmware uh, in, in theory. Uh, oh, and right, we ought to t check other stuff like it goes. And we can make engine noises, but you're gonna be freaked out. Oh, here we are again. Starting up a diesel engine in our steam. Chicka, 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 chicka. Okay, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. And turn the engine off, thank you. Okay. Gotta love Rail Pro's diesel sounds. Holy moly. Okay, um, so <clears throat> the by default it comes with the generic diesel setup. So we'll we'll set this up for light steam. Uh, Rail Pro only gives us uh, th three choices essentially, uh, and which we, I'm sure will sound just great. And then we're gonna seal all this up and be ready to go. I'm thinking that uh, we've done a successful job here. Um, Oh, and the, the fireplace flicker in there. If you, yeah, you probably can't see in the video. It's super cool. All right. Till next time. Okay.